Welcome back to another one guys, Luke here at Gramophone and today we're taking a look at a product from a company that both you and I know very well at this point if you've been keeping up with the channel and that of course is JBL. Today I've got the L75MS. JBL is bar none the most recognized name in audio across the entire world and JBL has this incredible range all the way from the simplest smallest smart speaker to $75,000 reference class gigantic speakers. But hidden in that range are stuff that calls back to an era of classic hi-fi that we all kind of long to return to every now and then. The L100 Classics are the perfect example. And this is actually a pretty unique product because it is taking new concepts like smart speaker concepts and it marries it to the classic JBL L100-esque formula. A true throwback product, taking the best of yesteryear and joining it to the best of today. So I'm excited to get into the details of this speaker with you guys, but before I get into all that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon so you catch all the notifications, and don't forget we also have a playlist of a lot of JBL products on the channel. So if you're a JBL fan or you're looking for something in the smart speaker category, excellent place to start. And question of the day, what vintage hi-fi product would you like to see a throwback or a refresh of? Now then, the L75MS, and what's it packing under here? So let's go all the way back, if you will, to that so-called golden age of hi-fi around the 1970s era when JBL first dropped the original L100. That speaker was a raucous success for JBL, really put them on the map as far as hi-fi goes, and because of its great success, JBL realized we gotta bring it back in the form of the L100 Classic, the first of kinda the new old line, if you will. We did a video on that, by the way. Really great speaker. Check it out right here. So after that, JBL said, we gotta expand this line. So then came the return of the L82 Classic and a couple other products in the line. And it pretty much just made sense that you would take this L-Series form and you'd give it what JBL is otherwise really known for today. Really good smart speakers and products in that category, such as soundbars, Bluetooth speakers, the like, that just work and work really well. You know, all those videos we've done on like JBL charges and boom boxes and stuff like that, what do I always say about them? At least above and beyond anything, they just work. And you know that the same can absolutely be said of this, except now you have that modern, no-nonsense feature set in a vintage hi-fi product that sounds entire orders of magnitude better than any of those others. So how did they do it? Well, let me tell you about some of the features, or at least the relevant ones. No doubt you've already noticed the grand aesthetic of the Classic Series with the Quadrex foam grill. We're gonna pop him off for a second. See anything else that looks familiar now? Very familiar. The same cellulose pulp woofer cone, that same four inch mid-range, a little bit different, but very similar. And of course, on both sides, dual titanium tweeters, just like the L100 Classic, just like the L82 Classic. So we've got the full driver complement from the other Classic Series products. And so the L75 MS asserts itself as a true member of this family, but do you really see any other big name speaker manufacturers taking some of their most well-known sought after driver technology from products that can cost up to $4,000 to $5,500 and drop it into a $1,500 smart speaker? Mm-mm. You've got the actual JBL L Classic drivers right here. It's the real thing. The bass drivers in this unit, you get this feeling that they're really trying hard to emulate the big brothers, such as what's in the L82 or what's in the L100, especially that L100 with that massive 12 inch woofer. They are a little held back by their size though, and that's just the laws of physics being what they are, using a similar design but having to scale it down so much. But I seriously respect JBL's attempt to do so, again, to maintain that true classic series character. But there's a secret sauce to this speaker. There is a sub out and it will auto cross over when you plug it into a sub. Meaning, as in, it will take out those extreme sub bass frequencies and send it right over to the subwoofer, allowing this speaker to free up its bass drivers 
to do a better job of producing that crossover into the mid bass region and blending in with the mid driver. I do think that mids overall are a strength of this, and that kind of makes sense. You can use this as a soundbar replacement, as again, I'll get it more into this later, but I'll bring it up now. There is HDMI arc in this product, and I think that's awesome. As for the high notes or the treble in this product, it, it is oddly enough a little more exaggerated than its big brothers, but I think there's a reason for this. These are still the same tweeters, and they sound very much like their brethren but there's a little bit extra, and sometimes it can get a touch sharp in certain songs. It can also really shine. For example, I thought female vocals, well recorded, did very well here. But I think the overall reason for that little bit of extra high-end excitement is because knowing that this could serve as a soundbar replacement, much like when I was talking about with the mid-frequencies, dialing in a little extra detail can be helpful when things coming through the TV can help get some of those details out that otherwise would have been lost. If you look at the backplate here, you've got some very good connectivity options. In fact, a few things that surprised me. You've actually got a moving magnet phono in on this product. It knows it's going for the turntable lovers, as it should, just like its big brothers do. So that is an excellent inclusion. And then right on the flip side, completely other end of the equation, HDMI arc, for nearly seamless TV connectivity. You also see that you have a three and a half millimeter AUGS in for good old fashioned way of hooking up your phone or other device to it with a good old hardwire. And there's that sub out I mentioned before that auto crosses over when you connect a worthy sub. Uh, JBL has their HDI series sub. If you're looking to pair this up with one, I'd probably recommend that because that is actually a very good sub. And in terms of being matched to the timbre, you can imagine it would be pretty close being a JBL product. Here's a cool feature, bass contour. Throwing this switch lets you take three decibels out of the bass. Now you're thinking, Luke, why in the world would I ever want less bass? Excellent question. I think that maybe the designers at JBL were aware that taking that almost same design and making it smaller is gonna flirt with the laws of physics a little bit. If you play something particularly bassy and the speaker's being pushed just a little too hard, Flip that switch, take just a little bit of bass out, let the speaker get a little control back, and it still sounds really good. And I think it's just a very smart idea. They were willing to accept what needed to be done. And I think that's actually quite forward thinking. And also just to wrap up the back panel here, you can see that you have a hardwire ethernet port, which I'd recommend if you have that handy, though the built-in Wi-Fi has been working very well. So either is certainly a good option. And underneath that, you have a USB port that can be used for servicing, but also provides a little bit of power for whatever you connect to it. And one last little detail that is integrated well, looking at this top control panel, which you probably won't be using often because this is kind of built around being used with your phone, as it does also have a JBL Music Life app that you can use with it too. Again, JBL's actually good at software. You've got net capability, Bluetooth, your HDMI arc, your moving magnet phono in, or your good old fashioned three and a half millimeter. You pretty much have everything that we could really want. And you are probably noticing the heat sink back here, which of course is for the built-in amplifiers. Fun fact, this is packing a total of 350 watts of amplification. A lot, by the way, for a smart speaker. A lot, a lot. And those are five separate amps for the five different drivers. You have 25 watt amps on the tweeters, you have a 50 watt amp on the midwoofer, and you have two 125 watt amps on the bass woofers. JBL is using some solid stuff in here and it definitely demonstrates that when you hear it. Oh, bonus, you get a good old fashioned physical remote for those of you who like physically pushing buttons sometimes the way that I do. Every input individually is right here on the remote. This really wasn't necessary, but I'm glad that they did. This is a premium product. I'd like to see it have premium features. There's something about still having a physical remote with a clicky button just feels good. So what are the advantages and what are some of the considerations that come with the L75 MS? The first one and the most obvious one, that L Classic Series aesthetic nails it. In its category, that being smart speaker, it's one of the best I've objectively ever heard. It's a product that can do some respectable hi-fi duty and some convenient soundbar duty. You can clearly see, just taking a look at it, this has certainly got some more heft and certainly got some more height than the average soundbar. So if you do intend to use this underneath a TV, you will have to consider the relative height of your TV, whether it be on the wall, whether it be on a stand, what have you. 
and accommodating this directly underneath it. It's definitely for a certain kind of person. You know you want something that sounds better than, way better than what the average is, especially in this idea of sound bars and smart speakers, but you still want something that can at least roll with the hi-fi crowd and do so respectively, this is for you. This is a vintage aesthetic. Personally, I love it. Like, good old-fashioned American walnut, I can't get enough. Do you like this kind of neo-70s, 80s aesthetic? Go for it. So, if that sounds like you, you can find this on skybygramophone.com. Again, it's priced at $1,500. You can check out securely and have it sent fast and free straight to your door. And of course, you can swing by one of the showrooms or give us a call. You'll find us in Timonium, Columbia, and Gaithersburg, Maryland. We also have a lovely kitchen design center out in Hunt Valley that you should go check out. Thanks for watching. Give me a like if you enjoyed this video. Come chat with me in the comments. And while you're there, tell me what you think of the L75 so far and what you think of the rest of the new Classic Series products, the L100, the L82. Don't forget question of the day. As always, thank you guys for watching. Peace in.